Cool. Okay. Correction, that's not the only slide. Unfortunately, I do have a couple extra slides. But don't worry, they'll be out of the way very, very shortly, right? Let's open my machine. Hopefully, we can switch to, switch to this so we can see things and stuff. Cool, you can see it. Let me know, that's zoomed in quite a lot. Um, okay, first slide. Uh, these are the tech choices that we're going to be doing. Uh, ooh. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Cool, you can see me. Okay, these are the tech choices we're going to be using. Google Kubernetes Engine. Uh, it's managed Kubernetes service. Uh, GitLab, kind of obvious. Um, Terraform, just been talking about that. Going to Terraform some infrastructure. Node.js, React and Redux, a bunch of JavaScript stuff. Um, yes, that does make them me the most annoying person in the room. I apologize in advance. Uh, but okay, it's, it's fine. Accept JavaScript. It's part of the world now. Uh, here's a little napkin diagram of the thing that we're going to actually build. So we're going to have a front end um, that's going to be serviced from uh, this front end pod that will yeah, can access all of the uh, static resources and things through by hitting the Kubernetes cluster ingress, going through a service, hitting the front end pod. Um, and then the back-end service here is going to be just serving the Node.js app. Slides over. Let's build. So, oh, God, that's hideous. Let's very quickly. System preferences. Displays. This is a good start. Arrange, no, not arrangement. Uh, scaled. Um, 1080. Maybe that'll work better. Ooh, can you still see that? Yeah, you can. That's fine. Okay, let's start things. Um, can someone shout out an animal, please? Uh, come on, more complicated than a dog or a cat. Giraffe. giraffe. You can't say giraffe. I've already got a project there called giraffe. Kangaroo. kangaroo. Okay, we've got kangaroo. We're going to create a new subgroup that's going to contain all of our code, and we're going to call it kangaroo. Uh, we'll make it public because we want to make things open source. Uh, let's create a new project called... <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, basically what we're going to do is call it Ops so I can actually put stuff in. So we're going to call it Ops because, not Ops 3, public, create. Come on, nice and quick, right. So uh, let's create a new folder called Kangaroo. Stick that in Ops. Uh, and then I'm just going to open the terminal and open this in code and go into kangaroo and open that in Visual Studio Code. Nice. Okay. So, checklist of things to do so I can actually stay on track. We're going to terraform a cluster, we're going to configure that cluster, and we're going to configure GitLab. We're going to initialize a front end and a back end. Uh, that's all our app stuff. Then we're going to do some dev stuff and actually develop a little bit of the back end and front end. I'm cheating a little bit because obviously it says zero to Kubernetes, but I do already have a little repo here. But trust me, it's not very much code, so I'm still counting it. Um, so we've got some Terraform here. Uh, we'll stick. Can you make the text bigger? Sure thing. There you go. Can you see that? Awesome. Um, let's stick that in the kangaroo folder. And let's, yep. Yeah. So we're going to create this platform here in Terraform modules. We've got. GKE, that's going to create a GitLab GKE thingy my bobby there. Um, let's call this actually, because I think I already have a cluster called dev in there. Let's just call it dev kangaroo. Um, and that'll do. So, first thing to do, cd into ops, cd into the dev environment. Um, <gasps> am I the correct user? Um, I should probably, can I come switch my email? You can email me if you want to. This is a public email, so don't worry. Uh, authenticate things, come on, need to be authenticated so I can use Terraform, common internet, allow. Oh, I'm butchering this, it's going to be fine, this is what I've code demos about. Right, Terraform in it. Cool, we're initializing the back end, that's going to store all our Terraform state in a Google storage bucket. It's initializing all the plugins. Cool. It's successful. Terraform. Uh, do I go straight for apply? No, let's plan it out first. Um, cool. So we're going to create a cluster. Nice. <laughs> Terraform apply. Um, so yeah, so whilst this Terraforms, um, let me actually talk about 
what we're going to be building a bit more. Uh, so this talk is pretty much about uh, CICD and why you should be doing it and uh, like why you should be using things like Kubernetes and also sort of going into some of the depths of if you are already using CICD, like you're using the GitLab uh, auto DevOps feature, which is pretty much n makes my talk null and void because I'm going to be doing everything in 20 minutes and auto DevOps sort of does it in like two clicks. But um, yeah, so we're going to kind of go into the, into the depths of how sort of some of the stuff that um, auto DevOps, how that works. Um, I'm simplifying things uh, to make it a little bit easier um, just for me because I've only got 17 minutes left now. Um, cool, but we've got Kangaroo. That is a cluster that's getting up and running. So terraforming cluster, uh, and then we're going to run some scripts on this cluster. Uh, these are pretty similar to what um, in the background for the auto DevOps stuff, uh, what it's going to be running. So we're going to be using Helm, which is a deployment tool, and I think it calls itself a package manager for Kubernetes, which is, I guess, accurate. Um, we're going to be initializing that. That'll put Tiller on it, although in the next version of Helm, it's not using Tiller, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we're going to be giving Tiller some permissions to make sure that it can actually do some stuff. We're going to be installing, installing a Nginx ingress um, just to make sure that, like, back to our architecture diagram, we actually have an ingress that will serve out some stuff. Uh, we're going to be sorting out GitLab CD, uh, CI CD things, so uh, making sure that uh, our CI CD pipeline can actually go and talk to our Kubernetes cluster um, and deploy things. And then we're going to look at some image pull secrets because I'm also using GitLab's uh, container registry um, to store some, well, containers. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting for Terraform to actually work now. Come on, two minutes to terraform a cluster. I mean, ironically, Google's pretty good at this. Um, and it takes like quite a lot longer on some of the other platforms, but I probably shouldn't say that sort of thing. I work for Capgemini, by the way. Come work for us. Cool. Corporate shill stuff over. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get told off for that. Um, whilst this is terraforming, oh no, I can't really commit it up. Um, Actually, I'll talk about some of the other stuff whilst this is terraforming that I'm going to be doing. So, in our checklist, I'm going to be initing a front end and a back end. So, all the scripts are doing are sorting out that configuration of the cluster and everything. The init front end, this is the bit where I'm sort of cheating with the zero to Kubernetes um, because I wrote a little open source generator thing. Um, this is my website. Look, it's pretty. Um, that Basically, you can, if you open a file, and as long as you have npm and git installed, uh, it'll just it boot up and generate. It's kind of like Spring Initializer, if people are familiar with the Java world. Um, it'll just generate you a front-end app, and I've got one for back-end apps, which I'm also going to be using, uh, with GitLab CI files, because I really quite like GitLab, hence why I'm here. Um, and yeah, yeah, it comes along with Kubernetes files to be able to deploy things. Uh, I'm currently using a little open source tool that the Home Office built called KD to deploy things instead of using Helm because I have some issues around deploying with Helm um, when it comes to aligning things between Git hashes and tracking that and then converting that into a semantic versioning thing. I don't know. If you're good at that sort of stuff, come talk to me afterwards. But we've terraformed something. Yay! Um, Let's go into, let's actually connect to this. I'm actually going to use the console, which is something that I didn't want to use, but I have to use it. Well, I don't have to use it. I could have, like, memorized that command, but fuck that. Um, so, kubectl, get pods. I don't have anything in the no default namespace, so let's have a look in the cube system namespace. Can you see that, by the way, or do you want me to make it even bigger? A little bit bigger? How's that? Oh, God, that's it. ugly. I'm going to have to, sorry. Sorry for you people who are short side. So we actually can connect to things. We can see that all of the Google stuff to do with FluentD and Prometheus and all that stuff is running. So let's run these scripts. Let's get Helm installed. So CD out of here and go into Kubernetes. And let's just run the first script. Cool, that's Helm installed and Tiller given the permissions. Done. Um, let's run the second script. Nginx, <gasps> couldn't find a ready Tiller pod. That's okay because Tiller takes 
a second to install. By the time I've typed out this command, it will be running. Ooh, it's not. Go on, there we go, now it's running. Um, let's rerun that second script. Nginx, and cool, it's done. Um, <laughs> magic. Um, let's sort out uh, GitLab CI. So, as I said earlier, um, the tool that I'm gonna be using is called KD, uh, and that requires a couple of little variables um, to be put into GitLab to make sure that KD, well, if, if, I guess with any deployment tool, you're gonna have to tell your deployment tool where to go. Um, so we're going to go into, we want to make this, all of these uh, variables available to the entire kangaroo group. So let's go into settings and look at CICD and look at variables and we're just going to create one called cube server, I think it's called. Um, and that is going to be uh, the actual URL that we're going to go in, uh, the actual IP address of this server. There we go. Um, it needs to be HTTPS because otherwise it complains. And we need cube token, which is the uh, token of a, of a um, here, a service account, uh, so that the GitLab, so that GitLab, when it goes and talks to uh, the Kubernetes cluster, it can go and say, hey, I need to go and run this, but I need permission to deploy things and all that sort of stuff. That's what this service account is going to do for us. Uh, how do we do this? We run the script, and it cr uh, creates the service account, and we can, it even outputs the token. Um, that's nice. We can just paste that in there, save the variables. Cool, that bit's done. Uh, right, so... We've done that bit, we've done that bit. We're not gonna worry about the image pull secrets yet. We'll come back to that. And uh, for the time being, we can close that off. That's fine, that's fine. Um, we'll get add, ooh, no. Get add, there you go, I'm doing work already. Um, uh, terraformed cluster. That's a horrifically short and not very descriptive git commit. Please don't make your git commits like mine because otherwise you end up hacking things together and people like me will tell you off. Um, we need the URL for this clone. Uh, git remote add origin u, git push. You're gonna complain, but that means I can copy and paste u. And push it up to master and cool. If I refresh that page, we've got some operation stuff in place. Um, what I am going to do, by the way, whilst I remember, is go into settings, because I should have done this beforehand, into variables. And we're just going to, uh, is it that one? Yes, we're going to hide them. Save. Cool. Should I mask them as well? Nah, bugger it. Maybe I should have done that. Security will tell, probably tell me off for that later. Um, right, so we've configured the cluster. We've configured a bit of GitLab. Let's initialize a front end app. Um, when I say it's a single line, I really mean it's a single line. Uh, cool, it's gonna curl an install script. Uh, all I need to do is CD out of this uh, and do make dir. Let's make a front end app. CD into the front end app and run my install script. So it's generating readmes, it's generating config and build files for all the Kubernetes and the GitLab stuff. Uh, it'll sort out, yeah, there's the Kubernetes files. Um, sorting out output files, so that'll be things like the index.html. Um, application code, so that'll be all the React Redux stuff. If you're unfamiliar with React Redux, uh, React is a library built by Facebook, grr, um, and it's actually pretty good, yay. Um, and it allows us to create these sort of composable components. That's a mouthful. Say that 10 times faster. Composable components, composable components. Anyway. Um, and Redux is a client-side framework that allows you to have a store and then push stuff out from there. And it's loading and it's installing our node, uh, node um, NPM modules. Oh, and it even opens co um, code for us. So let's have, let's actually close that because I've already got it in here. Um, it's already started it up. So if I do localhost 8080, cool, it says hello world. That's nice. Um, 
So quick little dive and explain of what's going on here. Webpack's going to build it all, package.json, if you're familiar with Node.js, that's going to sort out all of the uh, dependencies and everything. Dockerfile, Nginx, it's going to host it in an Nginx server and a Docker image. Uh, GitLab CI, this is the bit we, that we actually care about. Um, so this is the GitLab bit, them. Um, we're going to build it on a Node server and it's just going to run it and stick everything in public. We're going to build it into a Docker image and then push it into uh, GitLab's CI, um, uh, GitLab's container registry, and then we're going to deploy it using this KD tool. Uh, and KD just requires you to, at least the initial script that I've written, um, it already has all these variables and I just need to define it. So let's call it kangaroo.harmelodictalks. Harmelodic is my internet alias. Um, cool. That looks all fine to me. Um, let's leave that there for the time being. Make, let's have a look at these Kubernetes scripts. Cool, that looks like a deployment that will kick out a single replica and it's got all the registry deployment tokens. It'll do rolling updates, that's nice. An ingress, that's our in Nginx ingress bit that's gonna manage saying hello to the outside world. That's our service that's gonna connect our deployment and our ingress together. Lovely. Jubbly. Um, we don't need to do anything around that. So, initialized our front end, done that. Um, let's CD out of this and do exactly the same for uh, back end. Make CD is a command that I made up that allows me to make directories and CD directly into them. Uh, do, 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 do. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, I'm actually doing a talk. I should probably concentrate on that. Um, cool. Let's copy that. Let's run it. Exactly the same thing. Read me. Config files. It's building everything out. You can see it all just being pulled in from the outside internet. Open source. Don't you just love it? Um, yes, we do. We wouldn't love open source if we wouldn't be here if we didn't love open source. That's what I was about to say. Or if you're here and you don't like open source, why? Come and convince me, and I'll tell you you're wrong. Um, that's installing all of the things. So here we're just using Express um, because I'm lazy and can't be bothered learning any of the new Node.js frameworks because they'll die in about six months. That's the nature of the JavaScript world. Um, we all know it. Um, so I'm just using Express. Uh, cool, it started up. So if I go to localhost 8080, it says cannot get. But it does have a health check that says, oh no, oh, because this is running, I have a script. I configure this there. There's the health check. And if I say that, that then says hello world. Cool. Um, so it's going to say slash API just so that when we deploy things, um, it's going to be deployed under the same URL and I can still access things uh, through the ingress nice and neatly uh, via the same URL, um, which means HTTPS, which we're not going to do today because I don't have enough time. If we wanted to configure that, that's all good. We're going to do the same thing that we did for the... Um, Front end and just make it saying kangaroo.harmelodictalks.com. Some point I'm going to have to configure that URL. That works everything. That's fine. Um, right. So we've initialized all of that sort of stuff. We've in it at front end. We've in it at back end. Let's do some development because I'm sick of doing operations. Um, let's do the dev as part of the ops. Um, I want to make this easy because I don't have a huge amount of time. That's just saying hello world. I already have a body parser JSON thing in there, so if I kick out some JSON, a front end is going to like it. So let's say title is um, hello GitLab commit 2019. Smiley face. Uh, you're complaining because the linter is telling me to use single quote marks, even though I've been brought up on Java, which means double quotes for everything, and C++. Uh, what are you complaining about? This line is length of blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Stop complaining, Linter. I know you're trying to get me to write neat code, but also, I hate you. Um, right. That's some back-end stuff developed. Uh, let's make sure that the front-end can actually talk to the back-end. So, in our source, we have some components. That's going to render a title that says, this pops dot title. So, what I did there with that back-end where I said title dot thing. I'm already prepared. Um, Containers, uh, these are sort of bundles of components that contain state um, and define a specific part of your app. Then components define how the little widgets and bits work. Uh, that's just going to say, hey, on root, I want you to render index because we're using React Router. 
Um, if you don't understand any of this, don't worry about it. You can, I'll, I'll explain it all afterwards if you want. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then index container is just going to look into the Redux store uh, and get out the title. We're going to render it onto um, the fetch title. Uh, we, yeah, we're going to render it into here. On mounting, we're going to want to subscribe to the title in case we see any changes. We'll fetch the title from the middleware, because this is what Redux does, and then we'll render a title component and pass it the title uh, string. So let's have a look at some middleware stuff, at the Redux things. We've got an action that just sets the title. We have a store, so our initial title is initial title. Um, that's going to build out a store, which gets generated through these reducers that handle actions, blah, 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 JavaScript, everyone hates it. Um, this is the tasty bit. This is the bit that actually connects our, um, what did I edit in you? That was going to break something. Ooh, what are you not like? <gasps> Thank you. It's good job. Good job I spotted that, because otherwise that was going to make everything break. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we want to, this is going to fetch the title. So it's going to say get API as another little preparation thing. Um, and it's going to look at the JSON and it says, if I can read the JSON, set the title as data, but we want it to be data.title. Um, and if, if it fails, then it will just say hello world, so it still will actually render something. And if it fails everything and even the API isn't readable, it will still just say hello world. Cool. I'm no, like when I say on my checklist that I'm saying develop front end to read some back end and all I did was just add that. And I know I'm cheating, but I have 20 minutes. Just forgive me, all right? So <laughs> um, let's actually commit some stuff in place. Uh, we actually need some repos to store all of this junk. Um, come on, internet. You've been good to me so far in downloading all those horrifically large NPM mod modules. Um, Let's create the front end. What, how am I doing for time? <gasps> I have two minutes left. I reckon I can do this. Um, so let's, uh, that was the front end. We want to cd into front end, git status, git add. I should probably concentrate here. Um, CI, CD, middleware. Um, again, butchering these git, uh, git remote, add origin. Butchering these git uh, commit messages, git push origin master. Cool, I think you're going to be good enough. Um, then we want to go back to Kangaroo, new project. Come on, come on, internet. Uh, CD into backend, uh, add this into all of this sort of stuff, uh, CI, CD, and uh, kicking out a string, uh, git remote add origin, backend public create, do, 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 do. clone that, paste that in there, git push origin master. Come on, right. Um, that's pushed all of that stuff into there. We need to run our little script to sort out the, these images. So uh, as part of that, we need to go into settings, CICD, and so, not CICD, repository, um, because we need to have a look at some deploy tokens. These are the things that are going to allow Kubernetes to pull the images from GitLab's container registry. We want to read the registry. We want to create a thing. Let's just call this Kubernetes. Um, copy the username. So this script um, just takes um, cd into ops kubernetes 4. Um, this script takes an app name. So in this case, it's going to be the back end. So back end takes a token username. That's the thing I've just copied. It takes a token password. Please don't copy that. I will be deleting all of this except the code um, just to make sure that it's all open source. But I will be deleting all of this just to make sure you can't hack any of this stuff. Or I might just leave it for the day and see who can hack it. Um, and we need to do the same for the front end. And we'll go into Kangaroo, front end, uh, settings, repository, 
deployment tokens. I could have automated all of this, but that's no fun. Create deployment token, copy that. Run the fourth script again. Uh, this is called front end. We've got the username, we've got the password. Paste that in, that's the secret created. Cool, that's all that stuff done. That's gonna start uh, actually deploying all of this. Now I'm pretty sure we've done all of that. We're starting all the deployment because uh, all of this stuff, if we look at the CI CD for the front end, that's going through the deployment. Um, whilst that's running, we're going to sort out here. I created a blue Peter one just in case I massively screwed all of this up. Um, as a, here's what we made earlier for those people who grew up on blue Peter. Um, Kangaroo, we need a URL, which means we need to wait. Do we? No, we don't. <gasps> it's the en Nginx ingress, that's already been deployed. So let's have a look at services and ingresses. And we have here, <gasps> ooh, it's already starting to look like it's deploying, that's nice. Um, Nginx ingress, so we want to copy this URL. And we want to, I think it's that one, Nginx ingress controller, Oh, no, that's the, that's the, I was very, no, that's the Blue Peter one. Right, okay, that's why you're seeing Blue Peter stuff. Uh, we need to copy this one, because that's to do with Kangaroo, and we need to put this in here. Paste that in there, take off the port, create that. That'll go and update DNS, which will take a second or two. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, all we have to do is wait for, where am I going? Here we go. Uh, what was the last thing that I pushed up? Um, it would have been the front end, I think, was the one that I last created. Let's have a look. Uh, front end, yes. Uh, so if we go and have a look at the front end, this is probably the one that will finish last. MIC ICD jobs, go on, you're deploying. Everything's been green so far. I might have just pulled off a live coding demo in 15 minutes. And if so, don't know about you, but I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm gonna treat myself to a beer later. Because uh, God, I need it. <laughs> I stocked up on coffee just to make sure that I can actually do this. Um, right, uh, hopefully the Blue Peter stuff, don't look at my Chrome history, Christ no. Um, you're all giggling, it's worse than you think. Um, so that's our Blue Peter one, that says hello GitLab, but we wanna, say so we wanna see something that's better. Uh, we want to see our, that's all the init stuff, we can close all that down. <gasps> it's deployed, which means if we refresh this, that says kangaroo, that says kangaroo. If we click that, it says hello world, go on. <gasps> You're not connecting to the API, there it is! <laughs> that is a live coding demo. If I go back to the slides. Questions, ask me them afterwards, I've run out of time. Who am I? I'm Matt Smith, nice to see you. <laughs>